certainly looking forward to the LSU game. It is a whiteout game, so we do, do encourage the greatest fan base in the country to wear all white. A lot of events on campus this week, including SEC Nation, which will be here Saturday, and it is our only home game uh, in the month of October. Uh, moving on to this LSU squad, quite a lot to talk about there. Uh, Coach O, one of my favorites, 31-9 uh, at LSU, 47-36 for his career, 6-0, number two in the country, uh, presiding over a top 25 defense and a record-setting offense, uh, beat number seven Florida uh, at home last week by 14, which was their 24th double-digit win. Uh, as LSU's head coach. Uh, the offense is coordinated by Steve Emzinger, uh, coaching veteran, and uh, Joe Brady is a pass game coordinator. Spread RPO heavy, vertical passing game, 52 points, 561 yards, 34-34 uh, in red zone scoring opportunities, uh, led by Joe Burrow, uh, the uh, transfer from Ohio State, who's just uh, you know 2,100 yards, 25 touchdowns, three interceptions, and completing 80% of his passes. Uh, obviously, a uh, guy that's in tremendous consideration for the Heisman Trophy. Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, almost 500 yards rushing, seven touchdowns, and then the two receivers, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, you know, both over 500 yards, and guys that will be uh, playing on Sunday someday. Uh, Dave Randall, one of the best defense coordinators in the country, you know, kind of doing what he does, uh, 316 yards a game, 25th in the country, 91 rushing yards a game, 13th in the country. Uh, number 18 is kind of their rush linebacker, was in for a few games, was hurt, and then came back. Kalevon Chasen, 19 tackles, four for loss, two sacks, and you watch him rushing a passer at the end of that, uh, you know, Florida game. He's hell on wheels. I mean, that, that guy can get after the, the passer. He can, he can play the run. Very dynamic. Uh, linebacker number six, Jacob Phillips, 44 tackles, three for loss, and a forced fumble, leading the team. And then Grant Delpit, you know, consensus All-American, uh, going to be one of the top draft picks in the country when he – you know, eventually comes out. Uh, Greg McMahon is their special teams coordinator. You know, they don't get real fancy with it. You know, Edward Solaire, Stingley, and Avery Akins are, are the, uh, the returners and the kickers, and they kind of use their athleticism, their speed, their physicality. You know, kinda don't try to mix it up too much. They're uh, kind of simple in what they do, and you know, they get after it. So, you know, as always in, in this league, in this conference, you got the number one team in the country on this side. You got the number two team in the country on this side, and I think you got three more in the top ten. Uh, so when I talk about the margin of error being small on a weekly basis, uh, it's about negligible this week because there almost is no margin of error because of the way that they're playing. So we, we need to do a real good job game planning. We need to do a great job uh, you know, practicing. And we got we got to call a great game. And our kids got to execute at a high level to have an opportunity to be the team of this caliber. OK? How do you approach the quarterback situation this week? I know you've kind of asked that in post game too the other day, but uh, with, with Garrett as well as he's kind of played lately, do you, do you have a, a an idea of who would be the starter this week already that, that you that you would share, or is it just kind of a wait and see thing right now? No, yes, um, Garrett's going to start. Tommy's going to back him up. You know, based on kind of what we've seen the past few weeks, you know, both guys kind of deal with injuries, but you know, Garrett leading us over to the win over Kentucky, how it kind of come in at the end of the Auburn game and provide a spark and did the same thing in Tennessee. And Tommy's still not being completely over some of his things right now. We just feel like Garrett's been playing, moving the ball well. He gives us a, a great shot. Coach, you mentioned the LSU quarterback, Burrow, being a Heisman type of guy. It seems like he's developed really quickly in a short amount of time. Just your more of your opinions on him. I think he played well last year. I think he's playing a completely different level this year. You know, obviously with, with the uh, – you know, the new system that they're running and some of the things that, uh, you know, he's able to do, uh, you know, making quick reads, making quick throws and the, the receivers that, he, that he's thrown to, I think it's really, you've seen him elevate his game from a year span and take it take to a new level. You always knew he was talented, you know, coming out of Ohio State and coming down here, but I think, uh, you know, what they're asking him to do now fits his skill set very well. Coach Ellis, you always travels really well, and I'm sure they'll have a big contingent here. And you're probably going to need Bob from Boca Chita in the crowd with his cowbell. So, what's your pitch to get him and the rest of the Bulldog fans in, in the stadium Saturday? Uh, number two team in the country, best stadium in college football, and uh, going to need a true home field advantage. So, Bob and, and the rest of them out there, uh, Andy from Ackerman and Will from West Point and Carl from Columbus, bring them all in, bring the cowbells, be loud, and come on in, cheer, cheer, cheer your Bulldogs on.